the typewriter has greatly influenced the business commercial and economic progress of the nation today typewriters enable women and girls to perform military and industrial services as important as those performed by men through the courtesy of the smithsonian institution we show the development of the typewriter starting with the birth typographer of eighteen twenty nine Next, the Scholes machine of 1868, the Remington of 1873. This is the Calligraph, made in 1883. Next, the Hammond typewriter, made in 1884. About 1900, the Smith Premier appeared, followed by the Blickendurfer in the same year. This is the first portable, a Corona, and this is the Bennett Pocket typewriter. In addition to these standard machines now in use, modern business has created needs for special typewriters, such as wide carriage machines, justifying typewriters with which to make straight right margins, book type adjusted spacing machines which turn out copy like this, special forms writers, calculating machine typewriters, and card punch typewriters which turn out cards like this. Today, millions of typists at their machines speed the business and war activity of our nation. Their task is complicated by a typewriter shortage and a shortage of experienced personnel. Unfortunately, many typists cannot work rapidly and accurately. To turn out more and better work on the office front, beginners and average stenographers and typists must acquire superior usable typing skill. This film will demonstrate and explain the techniques essential for superior typing. One way to learn a better or the best way of doing anything is to watch and analyze the skill of an expert. If your skills are patterned after those of an expert, you can be a superior typist. Miss Lenore Fenton, who won 11 international awards and set eight international records in typing and machine transcription, will show us the typewriting skill which enabled her to set these records. In order to become an expert typist, it is essential to master the correct typing technique. How you type is more important than what you type. If you master the correct method of typing, your typing will continue to improve. But if you learn to type perfect copies slowly with one finger, you will continue to be a one-finger typist. If you want to become an expert typist, learn to work like one. You should know how to operate all makes of typewriters. Let's look at the various machines. This is the Remington Noiseless. The Burroughs. The Royal. The Underwood, the Woodstock, the L.C. Smith, the Remington Standard, the Electromatic. All of these machines are alike in many respects. Where there are differences, I will point them out on the individual machine. The first essential of proper typing technique is good posture. For good posture, your chair should have a firm back support. It should support your back comfortably. It should be low enough so that your feet rest flat on the floor, one foot ahead of the other to give you proper balance. If your chair is too high, poor arm position, slumping, round shoulders, and flat chest result. If your chair is too low, you must reach up, which is tiring. Your desk should be rigid. 
and of a height that permits working comfort. Sit squarely, nine or ten inches from your typewriter, a little to the right of the center of your machine. Let your upper arm hang freely and comfortably, neither too far forward, nor back, nor out. Relax. Don't be stiff and tense. Your elbows should be just below the level of the space bar. More type of fatigue is caused by unnecessary tension and waste motion than by anything else. Of course, this is tiring. in a natural, easy, working position. Drop your hands into your lap and relax. Look at your hands. When you walk, rest, or sleep, your hands do not look like this or this, but like this. Without changing the position of your hands and fingers, place your hands on the keyboard. Fingertips down, wrists flat. That's your typing position, with your fingers on the second or guide row of keys. Your wrists should be comfortably down and in line with your forearm, palms close to the keyboard and frame. This position enables your fingers to reach easily over the keys and eliminates tension. You should have almost no movement in your wrists and forearms. Read copy easily, without eye strain. Head erect, chin up. If you do much typing, some form of copy holder is useful. This surface keeps the copy at right angles to my line of vision. Both the top and the bottom of the copy are equally distant from my eyes. The real secret about motion is to use as little as possible. Do the necessary motions well. Eliminate the unnecessary ones. With your forearms and the back of your hands parallel to the slant of the keyboard, typing motions are confined to your fingers. use these finger motions. Or these. Their fingers travel miles through the air and unnecessarily use much energy every typing day. These useless motions give the impression of great speed, but in reality, they waste time, cause errors, and slow down the typist. This, of course, is the keyboard. This row of keys is called the home row. The four keys on the left of the home row, A, S, D, and F, are the guide keys for the left hand. While the four keys at the right of this row, semicolon, L, K, and J, are the guide keys for the right hand. These keys are struck by the fingers of your left hand. These by the fingers of your right hand. 
Each finger strikes certain keys, as illustrated in the fingering chart of your instruction book. All your finger motions are learned in their relation to the guide keys on the home row. Acquire the feel for F, R, F, 4, K, I, K, 9, D, E, D, 3, J, N, and so forth. Your strokes should be definite, light, quick, and even. Hit the centers of the keys. keys should be struck with the rounded tips of your fingers. If you strike the keys with your fingernails, you are apt to have aching fingers or chipped nails. If you want to become a good typist, it will be advisable to follow a conservative nail style. Stroke the keys with your fingers curved. When you strike upper or lower row keys, return the fingers quickly to the home row. Don't let your fingers cling to a key like this. Don't slur your motions from key to key. Hit each key just as fast as you will when you are a good typist, but have long, even pauses between strokes. During these pauses, you think and plan the next stroke. A person who strokes keys this way will never be a good, fast typist until she changes her stroking form. You see, there are no pauses, no spare time between strokes. But a person who starts stroking this way has considerable spare time between strokes. Later, the spare time is cut down. More strokes are made per minute, and this is the rate. Still later, it becomes this. There is no spare time left between strokes, and the person is typing as fast as he or she can. Exercises will develop your keystroking. To develop your precision and rhythm, strike the home row keys alternately from the outside in and then out again. Later, you will be able to speed this up, like this. To develop your finger agility and control, use two fingers of each hand to strike the keys on the three rows in an alternate figure eight pattern. Later, you will be able to speed up this exercise. This exercise can also be done with the middle two fingers.
end with the two end fingers. Learn to gauge your touch or stroking so as to produce copy of an even blackness. This is the mark of a good typist. Look at your type sheet. Your copy should not look uneven like this. 